Welcome back to 2230, your source for engaging discussions on news and politics in the Asian region. Today, we are diving headfirst into a hot topic that's been making waves in Singapore, the Minimum Income Standard, MIS, report and the government's response to it. But before we get into it, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and of course, subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking content. So, what's all the fuss about? Well, the MIS report, led by Dr. Nkok Ho of the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, suggests that a living wage in Singapore should start at 2,906 Singapore dollars per month. It breaks down income requirements for various household types, like single parents and partnered parents with children of different ages. But here's where it gets interesting, the government has pushed back, claiming that these figures might not accurately reflect basic needs. Enter Lim Teen, leader of the People's Voice Party, who slams the government's response, accusing it of having its head buried in the sand. He argues that it's a global norm to establish a minimum wage, or what's often called a living wage, and believes everyone is entitled to it for a decent life. Lim Teen cites his colleagues' calculations, revealing a staggering 765,800 individuals in Singapore, including permanent residents and citizens, may not earn the recommended living wage of $2,906, as advised by the MIS report. Now, that's a substantial percentage of the workforce struggling to make ends meet. But what about the government's perspective? They defend the progressive wage model, PWM, and argue that a universal wage floor isn't necessarily the best way to ensure decent wages for low-wage workers. They question the MIS report's methodology, pointing out its reliance on respondent profiles and group dynamics. They even claim that the report includes discretionary expenditure items like jewellery, perfumes, and overseas holidays. So, here's where we need your input, dear viewers. What do you think about this debate? Do you believe in the MIS report's figures, or do you side with the government's viewpoint? Is a living wage a necessity, or are there better ways to uplift lower-wage workers, as the government suggests. Leave your comments down below and let's have a constructive conversation. And before we wrap things up, let's not forget about rising costs and the government's ability to control them. Lim Teen expresses skepticism about the government's ability to handle inflation, especially with the impending GST increase. Do you share his concerns, or do you have faith in the government's economic policies? That's a wrap for today's discussion on Singapore's living wage debate. Remember to hit that like button if you found this video informative, share it with your friends to spread awareness, and subscribe to 2230 for more engaging content on Asian news and politics. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.